everybody it is Denea with simply Denea and we're gonna do some creative chaos today or some intuitive art I'll leave that up to you to decide first thing I'm gonna do something I didn't show you in any of the other videos I've done this is first of all part four of our four part series you'll notice that this one is not taped I'm gonna take the time to show you guys how I tape um, it's pretty simple I use frog tape I tried several different tapes so far and I have found this to be the best tape for keeping um, well for keeping the tape on whether you're doing acrylic pours or resin because um, I am more a resin artist than an acrylic artist but who knows that could get a little more even Stevens so I'm gonna get this tape on here what you want to do is you want to tape along your edges here and that's what's going to keep the bottom of your ooh, let go the bottom of your canvas from having drips and stuff all over it uh, on the bottom here you don't want that you want this to stay nice and clean so when it's all done and it's all dry you can peel this tape back off I will leave this tape on until I have my resin and everything on here. That way the resin also doesn't leave drips all over. So you want to give it, put it on here nice and even. Even, even. And then I try to cut it or use uh, my X-Acto knife so it's as close to this edge as possible. I should have just moved those cuts. But then you're going to go around and you want to push all of this on. Um, I have it hanging over the edge a little bit here, so I'm going to trim that so it doesn't um, look bad when I pull this off so I don't lose paint right here and have a blank spot. And you just want to do that really lightly because if you do it too hard, you're going to cut into the canvas. And you don't want to cut your canvas. And I'm just going to peel this off here. So I'm not really trying to teach you guys or anything. I'm just sharing with you guys what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. There's something floating off my phone. All right. And I probably could have easily just peeled the tape back off and repositioned it, but then I wouldn't have been able to show you guys how to do this, right? So we're going to do it this way instead. And later I may regret it. I don't know. <laughs> All right, and then I'm going to finish taping this up. So today's pour, our part four of our three-part, four-part series, <laughs> is going to be a wrecked ring pour. I've never done a wrecked ring pour before. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um... I think it's going to be a lot less challenging than a Dutch pour was for me because it's pretty close to like a dirty pour or something like that, only you're going to make rings with the paint. And I'm going to show you guys how I do that as I do it for the first time. Because, you know, why not record yourself doing something for the first time so if you fail, everybody can watch you fail. But, you know, the great thing about that is that while people are watching you fail, if they're out there trying to do the same thing I am, they've been having problems, they can go, oh my gosh, it's not just me. Other people do it wrong too. <laughs> all right, so you want to get this all pushed on. Um, it won't even hurt if you go around and burnish it. So I'm going to do that with one of these tongue depressors. I'm going to go around and burnish it. What burnishing it does is it warms it up and makes sure that that tape sticks on there really well. Trust me, I've had a lot of times where I've done a painting or something and it was all the hard work was for not because I didn't get the tape on right and I ended up with a mess at the end. It was not good. All right, so let me get this moved so we're in frame better. I need to just mark my table here, except for this is a temporary setup. I have another table on the other side of my room. This side of the room is actually for my other business because I have another business as well. 
I'm a busy entrepreneur apparently. Um, but like I said, I have to do that 24 by 48 and the other side of my room has shelves full of molds, um, resin art I've done <coughs> and a lot more. There's just not room. Okay. So we've got this on here. Let me get this moved just a little bit more. We've got it taped. We've got that already. We're going to want to get our base coat on with our house paint. Let me grab my gloves and get those on and I'm going to double glove so I can take one set of gloves off after I have spread my paint around if need be. Sometimes I can just wipe them off. These are actually really great gloves. I've been using a lot of different gloves in the time that I've been doing art, especially with resin. With resin, you have to, you just have to wear gloves. It is not safe not to wear gloves. So I go through a lot of gloves and because of COVID, they got super expensive. So it's kind of crazy, but I just found, and I'll share these with you guys. I just found a company that has these ones right here. You can see what they're called and they're nitrile. Um, best price I found so far, I ended up getting four or six boxes because I got such a good price. Normally I pay about $25 a box and I think those were like 10 bucks a box. So, all right, quick run through of the colors. My client wants primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. So that's what I've got. I've got several different brands here. I will quick, quickly tell you what I've got. Um, I'm using Liquitex. <coughs> Sorry guys. In the colors crimson, cadmium yellow, and primary blue. I am using Master's Touch in the colors, and this is Master's Touch, in the colors Navy, Sapphire, and Navy, Sapphire, Sunshine, and Red. <coughs> Hold on just a second, guys. All right, I'm back. Asthma is not my friend. Okay, so, and then I also have a shade of each color, um, or a shade of two of the colors in these color art pigments. These are specifically made for acrylics. They're amazing. I got the um, primary elements in a collection of, I think it was nine or 12 colors. I highly, highly recommend them. Okay, so I'm gonna get my house paint on here. I am using a house paint from Walmart. That is, I keep turning the can the wrong way. That is the Color Place. Color Place, and I got it in satin. My um, cell activator has a combination of Floetrol and the house paint for one. I have a second cell activator, which is equal parts the Floetrol house paint and the deco art pour medium and i'm very very happy with how that is working out so far okay so how this works again i'm gonna get the white on here while i tell you guys how it goes you're gonna need a cup for this version because you're gonna do a dirty cup um, if you've watched my other paintings you know that a dirty cup is a combination of colors um layered in a cup all right now we're gonna get this nice and spread out i love the texture of this paint and i have a little bit of red in there i'm gonna try to get that out i think i must have had it on my glove when i picked up one of those bottles of paint but you want a generous amount of paint whenever you're doing acrylic pours because that's what helps your paints flow. And if you want to tip your paintings or anything, you want to have flow. If you don't have enough paint on there, it's not going to flow. And you're not going to get the look you're looking for. 
Okay. And I'm just going to bring that to the edges as much as I can. Get that off my gloves. Wipe it off and see if I need to remove my glove or if I can keep it on. I think I'm going to be able to keep it on. All right. There we go. These wipe off so easy. I love these gloves. Um, I actually think I'm going to add a little bit more around, if it'll let me, around the edges. Oh, look at that. I'm starting to learn how to use this bottle. What? What? <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know. I'm a dork. But I will tell you, if you're going to watch my videos or go to my Facebook and watch my live, trust me, you'll get used to it, or you won't, and you won't watch them. It's your choice. <laughs> All right. Um, I also am, I have some gold to add to this, and if I want to, I have um, an interference and a uh, diamond, uh, basically, what is it? It's a diamond dust red shimmer. Don't know if I'm going to add those to this one, but... First thing I'm going to do is take the torch to this and I'm going to get these bubbles out of here. When you take the torch to it, please be careful not to over torch it because the idea is to get the bubbles out, not burn your paint, not uh, get a film on your paint. And if the torch is not enough to get the bubbles out, you can get yourself a mister and you can mist it very lightly. This is a mister, very lightly with some alcohol, okay? All right, so look at this beautiful, beautiful canvas. Um, here we go. So I'm going to take our little cup here, and I'm just going to hold it up so you guys can see what I do. I'm gonna, let me get my colors open real quick first. Um, I actually think I'm going to switch things around. I've been doing red, yellow, blue, red, yellow, blue each time, and I think this time I'm actually going to start with... Uh, let's start with, let's start with the yellow. Let's do it. Let's just do this. And I'm actually going to add a little white this time. I haven't done that in any of my other ones. I just want a little white in the bottom of the cup. And then we're going to do the pineapple crush. Wait, nope, I lied. That's the cadmium yellow. And we're going to do the Pineapple Crush, or not. It's okay, Pineapple Crush. You can be a jerk. I don't care. Here we go. Pineapple Crush. Why are you not coming out, Pineapple Crush? As I stated on my last video, it seems that these little bottles, um, I thought that would be great. And they kind of are, but you have to really, really check them before you get started because sometimes you get a little bit of dried paint in there even if you clean them up each time. All right, so we've got the two yellows. I'm going to stop at the two yellows and I am going to add some cell activator. Helps if I open it. It really, really does. Trust me. Okay, a little cell activator. And then I'm going to add, let's do some blue. And we've got the primary blue, and again, I don't have it open. Didn't I just say I was going to go open up all these? I think I forgot. <laughs> Alright, so primary blue. And then I'm going to do the sapphire blue. Okay. And then I'm going to do a little bit of the interference in the violet blue, which you won't be able to see any color right away because it's basically white, but <clears throat> it gets a really pretty opal-like opal color to it, and sometimes it really shows up in the paintings. Other times, eh, depends on what you're doing. Shows up really great if you're using dark backgrounds. All right, and then I'm going to do gold. Again, she doesn't have it open. So some gold. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to grab some sunshine yellow. 
I mean, you can do whatever you want. Play around with things. I'm going to do the Candy Apple Red. Because we haven't done that one yet. I love that Candy Apple Red. And then we didn't do the Navy Blue. So we're going to do the Navy Blue. We're going to do some more Cell Activator. Why are you not coming out? There we go. And let's see, what do we want to do? Because that's not quite enough paints. Let's add some of that shimmery red in here. Look at how pretty, that's such a pretty color. And then <coughs> I think I will do one more squirt of each of the uh, sparkly ones. So we're going to do some more of the crushed pineapple, some more candy apple, and some more of the sapphire that has the crystal dust in it and the interference. There we go. We're going to call that good. So this should be enough. Now what we're going to do when we put it on here is we're going to do little swirls. So let's try this again. I've never done this before. So you just let it slowly pour out and you do this. Oh, look at that. She's doing it. Now this is called a ring pour and you can see why you're making rings. And the reason it's called a wreck ring, a wrecked ring, is because I'm going across like this. Or you could have done it as a circle right in the center, all a circle. And I'm going to go back the other way because I still got color. But then instead of leaving it as a circle, you're going to uh, do like I did with some of the other paintings, and you're going to. Um, move your move your canvas around. All right, we're gonna hit this with <coughs> some heat. <coughs> Sorry guys, asthma is been a problem today. I think it's because of the heat we've had here in Michigan with the humidity. It was 91 today and it's about 2 2 30 in the morning and it's still pretty warm. All right, I am gonna start moving this around. That looks really weird right now, right? All right, so I'm going to tip it this way. I think I'm just going to kind of go in a circle here a little bit. I think technically I was supposed to just do this as a circle in the center of the canvas, but eh, I think this way it was more like probably closer to a wrecked ribbon pour. But, you know, nobody's perfect. <laughs> and we're going to keep going. And it is my first time doing one of these. So we shall see how it turns out. We're not getting a lot of the red in there. I think it's all on the bottom. So I'm going to start tipping it this way. and see if we can get some of that red to come out. Though that pretty, the pretty, uh, Yellows and stuff down here are kind of nice. Let's move it this way. And you know, like I said before, that's one part of what's fun about doing these pours is you can play around with it as long as the paint will cooperate and move for you. There we go. <clears throat> It's getting a really interesting, um, I don't know, look to it. Again, I, we put, I put a little extra red in here because I put extra of that candy apple in here. And this painting looks like kind of the blues and the yellows took over, which is not a bad thing unless you, um, have a customer that is looking for primary colors and is hoping to see some red in there. <laughs> That it might be a bad thing. Ooh, I'm getting paint all over this hand. 
Oh, this is looking really, really cool though, guys. I'm going to keep letting it go this way because it has these really beautiful rings, you know, like Saturn rings, um, almost like you get in a geode. So we're going to keep going and we're going to let that darkest blue kind of just work its way right off the end. I got a lot of yellow and blue on the table here. It looks like a Michigan State table. All right, now I'm going to kind of bring it back down and then I will show you how awesome this looks. Okay, <gasps> look at this, look at that. That is beautiful. Now again, we didn't get a lot of the red. You can see some of it in there, but we didn't get a lot of it. I am gonna pull off this top glove because it ripped anyhow. Um, this one I can just wipe off. And I'm going to see if I can hit this with the heat again and get a little more lacing or cells. I can see we've got some lacing going on. <coughs> we've got some cells down here. Sorry, I really hate coughing on my videos. And I know some of you are probably like, stop apologizing. You have asthma. And I'm like, I don't care. It annoys me. <laughs> All right, let me grab a drink of water right here a second. Sorry about that. And let's hit this with some more heat. Oh, this is getting so pretty down here. It does have lots of bubbles in it though, so I'm gonna get those out. Oh, this is so pretty. Like these bands are just gorgeous. But you know, this is a good example of, you start out, you plan on making a painting that's reds, yellows, and blues. And you can see that clearly the blues and yellows have taken over. So you've actually got a painting that is these beautiful blues, greens, and teals with just this little bits of red flowing through it that make it look like I don't know, the red's mixed with this gold and the gold is beautiful. Like, I think I could have added a little bit more of the gold. I only added the gold the one time. Oh, the cells are so pretty. Wish we had a little bit more down here. I noticed that this blue, with this being the four, fourth painting I've done, I've noticed that the sapphire blue doesn't get a lot of cells in it. So I think, I might experiment with putting a little bit more of the um, cell activator on top of every time I use that and see if I can get more cells next time. But this is, oh man, this is gorgeous. I wish this was a big painting. I mean, it's beautiful this size too. I am sure that I'm going to be able to find a buyer for this, but wow. And then I'm going to hit it with just a tiny bit of a mist of the alcohol down there. So I can see if a little bit more of that red will come out from underneath. Oh, that's so pretty. I'm not going to hit it up here because I just love how this is and I don't want to disturb that. But you can see how one, it brought the sparkle out more here in the blue. Um, it did bring a little bit more of the red up. Oh. Again, I don't want to hit this too much because I don't want to get a skin on it or burn it. But I can tell each time I hit it, we're getting a little more color popping up and a little more cells. And that's beautiful. Oh, man. Okay, so I can see, I like I said before, I watch a lot of YouTubers who are artists. And I can see why so many of them are like, oh, this might be my favorite piece of artwork. And then they do the next piece of artwork. Oh, this might be my favorite piece of artwork. All right, I'm not gonna keep you guys here forever. Thank you so much for watching this. I'm gonna take the phone down and I'm gonna do a close up so you guys can see this closer. If you would be so kind as to subscribe to my channel, hit the like button, 
please share this video with somebody so I can get more followers. My goal is to get 1,000 subscribers so I can eventually do lives on here and allow people to come on and talk to me while I'm doing these. All right, let's take this down. I am still getting more cells and stuff on this as we speak. All right, here we go. Oh, isn't this just gorgeous? Let me. Oh, look at that. So can you see how that gold kind of combined with just a little bit of the red? And you just get this beautiful, beautiful painting. Oh, man. I kind of want to keep this one for myself. I mean, I know I shouldn't, but as an artist, I can tell you on one hand how many paintings I've done for myself since I've been doing art again, and it's zero. <laughs> I still haven't done one for myself. Isn't that crazy? Oh my goodness. Look how those colors, after I hit it with just a little bit of mist, look at that. Oh, I really wish that the uh, ring light didn't interfere with how I was trying to show this to you guys, but I'll be posting pictures too. Um, if you're not friends with me or you're not following my Facebook page, you can find me under uh, Denea Wendy Purcell, or you can find me under uh, Simply Denea, and I will try to put that stuff in the uh, comments or in the uh, description below. I'm not going to go so far as to list all my paints or anything like that for these, but I will definitely put uh, contact information. I also have a group that's called the Arts District that is for all artists of all mediums, if you guys would like to join that on Facebook. But until my next video, thank you so much. Please allow just a tiny bit of chaos into your life because chaos and creativity can lead to beautiful things. Bye!